quarterfinal match of the Group C qualifier of the Bunter Blitz uh, Cup. And uh, I'm playing today against Polish GM Kasper Piorun, a very strong grandmaster member of the uh, Polish national team. So I think we can start going. I checked his openings a little bit before the match. And uh, I felt like he's consistently well prepared. So I'll probably try to play different stuff in the opening, but I'll start with the main stuff. Just some rare team, which may transpose to English. Or the King's Indian. So let's see. I haven't really checked this line before. And before today, so maybe I would just forget something. But in general, this should be very good for white. Queen c2 and then rook d1. Yep. And since he played rook e8, I might start thinking about d5. So that's why he took on d4 probably. Yeah, knight c5. What should I do now? Bishop f4 is a move. You can also play bishop g5. But I probably should play bishop f4 and start putting pressure on the d6 pawn. And maybe just move the knight from d4 to b3 at some point. Knight h5, and now I just go back to e3. And I provoke this knight h5 move that it's quite useless for black. Eventually, black will have to retreat to f6. OK, queen, f queen e7. What should I do now? Maybe rook d2, rook d2, rook e1, something like that. Or just double up on the d file. Yeah, knight f6. I think I've checked this line before. I don't know. Rook e1 now? Is it the move? Or I can play bishop f4 maybe, but then he goes back. All right, I will provoke h6 first. And then maybe go back to f4. Because let's say h6, bishop f4, and then I have knight c6 idea. OK, he goes back. I'll just simply take, I suppose, and play b3. Yeah, this looks pretty good for me. And now I'll start attacking the d6 pawn. Rook a d1, bishop f4. I think the fact that I exchanged the d4 knight is actually in my favor because I opened this d file for myself. And I have to say that it's quite difficult for him to create any counterplay because the, the e4 pawn is well defended. 
I don't think there are any tricks along the A1, H8 diagonal. So he's going passive, right? He's going knight E8 next move. That's probably good news for me. I think I'll play H3 first to cover the G4 square. And then maybe reroute the knight to D4 via E2. Okay, now I have the five square for my knight. So let's go. And I can also play F2, F4 at some point. So far, I'm quite happy with the opening. And also, it feels like it's much easier to play with white. Okay, knight h7. Interesting. I guess he's going to f8 and then to g6. But if it feels a way too slow, no? Knight f8, f4. And I should be first to create my play on the king side. Yeah, I take. You should be c8 back. Wow. Okay, so now knight g6, knight h4 is coming. I'm thinking about just simply playing f5. Of course, I'm giving him the control of the e5 square, but Maybe it's not a big deal. Also, I can just simply play king h1 or something. Whatever, I like f5. I really like f5. Yeah, knight d7. Then I was going to play knight f3. Knight f6, I have e5, and I have this pin uh, along the d file. Don't think this works for him. I would be very surprised if you can play chess like this with black. Okay, d5. I think now I should just move the bishop from e3. And then I have f6 coming. Yeah, he's just losing a piece, right? Knight e4, I go f6. What is that? I take. Okay. I don't think he has enough counterplay here, enough compensation for the piece. Knight f2, king takes f2. Everything seems to be defended. Bishop on g7 is not doing much. Knight c3, just through e1, I guess. Cover is a e2 square. Now the rook is going to g4, which is also great news for me. He goes back. Now I have bishop h4, right? Just reading all the material here. Yeah, the rook on e1 is defended. Rook d8, I take on e4 with this rook. Okay, he just hang everything. Okay, good start, good start. Okay, so let's see what we'll have with black. He usually plays e4, but maybe they will see some surprises. I haven't decided yet what I will play against e4. Okay, so he goes d4. And bishop g5, so. Some Trumpovsky. I'll just go for the most solid line out there. Knight bd7, 
h6. Should I include h6? Should be a decent idea, right? Bishop d3. b6 or c5 immediately. I guess I'll postpone c5 for a moment. So b6, c4. g5 is an option now. So let's see, g5, he takes. Do I have any tricks there? Maybe not really. Okay, one standard way to react is to play c5 here. And then b5, just uh, temporary pawn sacrifice. Wow, it's a very interesting position, but I need to play faster. I cannot spend one minute before move 10. So my point is that now after knight f3, maybe I will play g5, f takes g5, and knight g4. So the pawn e3 will be hanging, and I will take recapture on g5 with the h pawn. Not sure how good it is, but at least it's fun. At least it's fun. And that's all we need in, in a banter blitz. He is not obliged to recapture on g5. Like he can move back to g3 with his bishop. But then even knight h5, maybe. Yeah, that's what he does, bishop g3. Knight h5. Knight e5, I take on g3, then take on e5. Not really a big fan of my position, to be honest, but it is what it is, yeah. At least I'm guessing his moves successfully. <laughs> so I kind of can react uh, a bit faster. Yeah, queen d7, and then I castle queen, uh, queen side. I think I should just sacrifice this pawn, no? So queen takes f7, g4 probably. And then my bishop goes out to g5. Of course, you can say that a pawn is a pawn, but uh, I should have a very decent compensation for it. Then maybe rook f8 at some point. Maybe I'm just wrong. And he plays king e2, then rook f1. I don't have anything. Yeah, it is very difficult to create anything there. Well, now at least I win this pawn on e3 back. I think he should have played king e2 there. It would be much more unpleasant for me. And king e2 is still coming. Queen e8.
King e2, bishop g5, and at least I can take uh, on g5 if it's a rook. And now bishop c6, bishop b5. I'm trying to exchange this d3 bishop. Because it's a very good defender for his king. And once I exchange it, I'll definitely get some counter chances. Maybe it's not that easy for him anymore. Queen f4, okay, we should be five. I will not take, because I don't have to. Just h5. Red just keeps the tension like this. I let him take on b5 whenever he wants. Okay, now I will change and play queen a4. Queen b3 maybe. It's not that simple for him. That's for sure. Okay, king b7. I also have a very solid position. Like he has this extra pawn on g3, but uh, making any use of it, I'm not sure about it. Okay, he goes for this exchange. And I'm losing the, my pawn on e6 in the end, so. I guess I should be pretty happy with the draw here. Not really playing for a win. Well, he is playing for a win. I'm not 100% sure that it's a great idea. For example, now I have h4. His queen is very passive on b1. And I'm getting tons of counterplay. All right. Yeah, that's a good move. That's a good move. If I take... Yeah, I have a feeling that I did something wrong here. Yeah, that's a problem. My e6 pawn is falling. I'll try to get some counterplay with rook h4, rook h2. Check. Let's go here, here. Like this, maybe? E6, King C6. I'll give the check first and then I take on B2. But I'm probably in trouble anyway. His E pawn is a way too strong. Yeah. Maybe I have just enough resources to survive. Give this check. Uh, can I take maybe? Let's be a bit more active.
Yeah, I think I should be fine here. Just a perpetual now, yeah. Well, that was a difficult game, but good save in the end, good save. So back to, to white pieces. And I'll check the same thing with, with the Rati. Let's see how he reacts this time. I don't think he was very happy with the opening outcome of the last game. So I'll just repeat the same line and see what he does. He has also played some Grunfeld. So we can expect d5 here, for example. No, he goes d6 anyway. Bishop f5 now, maybe? Okay, knight h4. I don't think that's a big deal now. I just castle, right? Knight f3. Oh, there is knight g5 here, for example, but then d5 actually equalizes the game. So I'll try something more interesting. So the line goes knight c takes c3, b takes c3, bishop c8, I think. And now just a very complicated game. Basically, white is trying to push a4, a5, h4, h5, and maybe also e4, e5 in the center. Okay. So basically, I'm just pushing all my pawns. Trying to understand what am I going to play after c5, for example, now. Goes through k8. Probably getting ready to open up uh, the center. h6. Is it a useful move at all? What about c5, by the way? c5 is always kind of a natural reaction in these structures. c5, he takes, d takes c5, I take on e5, knight takes c5, knight takes c5. He ta has to take with the rook because he played h6. So maybe bishop before he goes back with his rook. Well, I obviously have some compensations there, but probably not that much. You can also include h4, h5 at some point. Maybe it is quite useful for me, maybe not. Or I can play bishop e3. Bishop a3 is another move. I don't know. It's not that easy to play this position with white. That's for sure. Queen a3. Okay, let's go like this. You'll probably play c5 now. I haven't decided yet what I will do after that. Maybe just simply bishop e3. And then just rook a d1 or something. Right, what about c5 now?
Probably nothing has really changed. So bishop b3 first. That's a pawn sacrifice because he can take on d4. And I assume I will capture c takes d4 and let him take on e4. But that should be extremely dangerous for him. Rook takes e4, bishop f4. I'm attacking d6. And I'm probably taking the control of the e file. I, I'm not sure if he should have done that. Like, he took on d4, but now my play is just much easier. Like, I'm controlling the center, and unless he does something concrete, okay, I can include rook e8. Yeah, I guess it's a good exchange sacrifice. Knight f6. I need to take control of the e file and put my rook on e7. I think that's key. It's uh, the key to success for me. So let's see if I can achieve that, actually. Rook a e1 is the next move, almost for sure. Okay, I don't care about the c4 pawn. Just putting the rook on e7 is much more important right now. d5? Okay. I can sack the exchange back on e6 at some point. Maybe ninety five. Also, a six is a move. It's getting a little bit crazy now. The idea of including a six was that now he can't really take on c four. I wanted to say, but he does it anyway. Wow. I don't know, this doesn't look right for him. D5. He just let all my pieces out. I'm pushing D6 next move. And then 97, 95. Yeah, let's do it. Queen d7, knight e7, king somewhere, bishop c6, and I take on f5. All right, I need to be careful now. Just a little bit careful. Knight g4, rook e2. Maybe I'm allowing a way too much counterplay, yeah. E7. Yeah, we are so low on time. And it's very difficult to play. Rook E7. Is this game over? All right. <laughs> Another messy game, which ends well for me. But uh, this one was not that convincing as the first one. Okay, he goes d4 again. What should I do against it? Uh, I think everything was correct up to a certain point. Maybe 
Maybe we should start with C5 now. Okay, H6 is useful anyway. And I go C5. F4, I go B5, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get this counter play. Because in the last game, I played B6 and basically just wasted the tempo. This, this should be much more powerful before next move, probably. He takes, I think, just through B8. I looked at this some time ago and I came to the conclusion that black is totally okay. A4, A6, and then I take on B2. Okay, I take C4 and then Queen A5, maybe. That looks good. It's very difficult for him to defend his C3 pawn. And it's also quite useful that I haven't castled yet. So my king is much safer on e8. And he has less chances to go for direct attack on the king side. So the only way to defend uh, the c3 pawn now is knight b1. But that's such an ugly move. Even simply knight e4 there. Now I just take. I can take on e3 as well. Take everything, or I can even play knight g4. This cannot cannot be right for him. No way. No way. I actually really like knight g4. Bishop p7, I take on e3 with the knight. And just imagine, with my king on g8, he would have this uh, bishop h7 idea. But with my king on e8, there is no checks. So no additional tactical resources. So that helps a lot. He goes bishop e F2, now I just take with a knight on e3 anyway. Take two pawns up for nothing. Castle now, I guess. I just don't see any counterplay for him. All my pieces are also extremely active. I can take on. Mm, can get this pawn at some point as well. Let's take. I mean, I don't have to take. It looks good. Oh, wait, did I just blunt the rookie one? Wow. Oh, rookie one, queen a3, that's a lucky save. Wow. I was worried that I just blundered this bishop on e7. And when you are two pawns up, it's generally pretty useful to exchange some pieces. Just could be much easier to win the game. Yeah, we take knight b1. Where is he going? Knight e4. I, I think that's it, to be honest. I mean, rook, yeah, rook c2 is the only move, but... White has no moves, just rook b8. Just look at all my pieces. 
we can even just simply forget about me having two points up, two extra points. I'm just dominating even without them. This knight on e4, queen on e3, white is totally paralyzed. Yeah, I don't see a way for him to defend. And yeah, another win, three and a half. So I need a one point more to win the match. And I have white in the next game. I'll keep playing the same stuff. But this time I would not go for this rookie one, queen p3. Just simply no need. Kc6. Let's go knight g5. If he goes d5 and then shows that uh, he knows how to equalize there, then it's a draw. If he goes h6, I go e4. I think I should go back. F3 is not that great. F3, I take h takes g5, f takes g4. Yeah, that's, that one is not so clear. Kc5. What is this? Maybe just simply queen d2. Queen d2. Bishop takes f3. Oh, wait, I can also take on c5 first. Don't really want to close the position with d5, so. So let's see, queen d2, bishop takes f3, takes on f3, takes on d4, takes knight e5. I have bishop e2 there. And I think it's quite important that his pawn is on h6. That's so quite a significant weakness in the future, especially if we exchange uh, the dark square bishops. I think if he moves his pawn back to h7, then black would be totally fine. But here I'm quite excited about my position, I would say. Queen e3. Like, he has to spend his time for defending the, the h6 pawn. All right, how do I consolidate now? Rook d1. You go queen b6, I assume. Then just queen d2. Okay, let's go back to e2 to defend this c4 pawn and get away from knight e5. Rook c1 next, then b3. And probably I'll put my king on g2. So let's use this g3 move for our king. I would say white is slightly better, but it's very far away from anything more than that. Actually, after he played rook c8, I would have the idea of playing bishop g4. Okay, now I don't have it anymore. Where is this knight going, though? So I think b3 is a useful move anyway. Should also play h4 at some point.
again, I mean, it's it will be very difficult for him to create any counterplay. Maybe his idea is to play e5, but at the same time, it's very, very risky for black as well. But I do need to take it seriously. e5 and then knight d4. It's an actual idea. So rook c2, e5, rook c2, knight d4. Knight b5, I guess. And then we exchange the knights. My bishop goes out to c4. And I blunt the rook c3 in that line, yeah? That's not good. And I also forgot about queen c5. Just totally forgot about this move, yeah. I'm losing the control a little bit. I'm still very, very solid, but he gets tons of counterplay on the dark squares. Queen e3, c5 back. If he goes queen e5, I actually don't think I will repeat. Of course, I'm leading the match by three points, but I do like my position. So, like the main problem right now is is time. I'm behind and. Uh, can become a big deal. Once the position becomes more complicated. And I don't know what to do. Probably I should play f3 and defend the e4 pawn, cover the g4 square. I take four, maybe. Let's actually go to the, into this end game. I have the idea of playing knight b6, so he has to defend against it. Oh, I don't like this rook d2 move, man. The rook on d4 now is very suspicious. Okay, he wants to play b5. And I missed a moment when I could defend against it. Still, b5 I take. A takes b5, rook b4. And then I push my A pawn. It's not a move F4. Here. I blunder T5. E5 is just game over now. Wow. It's not good. D5 now, yeah. That's a cute checkmate. Wow. Yeah, just, just too low on time. Playing a 4 there was a crucial mistake. Should not weaken my structure that way. It was an important moment in the game. 
Right, let's not allow him to come back in the match. That would be would feel quite bad. I saw the match between Le Quan Liam and Ray Robson two days ago, and yeah. That comeback was just crazy. Making it from 4-0 to 4-3. Let's hope the history will not repeat here. C5. Will he actually repeat the line with F4? Yeah, knight f3 is definitely a much better move than bishop b5. Goes like this. A little bit surprising, to be honest. But... Can we go back? Knight d5 now? B6. Do I develop my bishop to A6 in these structures or not? Or just to B7? Oh, wow. That's such a bad move. He has bishop A4 now. Wow. And he didn't see it. Incredible. Bishop before there was almost killing it. Because that pin was just deadly. He wanted to take on f6. And maybe the only move I had there was just bishop c8 back. Okay, now I can take with the rook bishop a4, bishop c6. Because the knight is good on f6. I don't really have to move it. Knight f3. Oh, castle. Knight e5, rook c7. I actually think that he should have gone for g4 instead of f5. Looked like a more reasonable continuation of his plan there. So now I think I just take. And overall, this structure should be very good for me. Like bishop f5, bishop c8, or this. P6. What have I done there? He could sacrifice, I assume. Just take two times on f6. Yeah, I started making some very, very suspicious decisions. Okay, now I'm I should be able to consolidate. Because without the white square bishop, 
I don't think he has enough resources. D5, I have rook uh, D8. It goes like this. Okay. I'm actually thinking about just simply playing bishop D5 and sacrificing this pawn. But maybe queen A6 is just a safer way. Why sacrifice when you can play the same position but without sacrifices? Especially in the blitz game. Like I should try to make my life as simple as possible. So my intuitive decisions would be will be just good good enough. Queen six. Yeah, now I'm very, very sorry. His b2 pawn is weak. So d5 bishop is controlling everything. Can I play rook b8 right now? Because another option would be just play bishop f6. G4. I missed this one. Is it a big deal? So there are some bishop page six there, which can be very, very annoying. The point is that rook b2, he can take on b8, and his f2 rook is defended by the knight. I don't know, I'll just go back. I will just go back. Ninety-five, maybe King H seven. Once again, I'm losing control of the position. Looks Starts looking very suspicious. Like bishop h6 now. Okay, now rook f5. Still have no idea what to do next. Very difficult to play with black. Okay, rookie five is a threat now. Oh, did I just trap his queen? <laughs> that just came as a surprise even to myself. I was just making some random moves and then I found out that uh, Queen was trapped. Wow. Oof. That was such a nervous game. I think he missed some chances to for a crushing blow, for a crushing final blow. Because like he had all his pieces into the attack on the king side. I don't think there was a way I could defend it. But he didn't find it. He didn't find it. And I think uh, the score is four and a half to one and a half. And uh, this means that the match is over. And uh, I can't, I guess I advance to the semifinals. And uh, uh, I'll play with the winner of the match. Uh, 
between Adhiban and uh, Flores, I think, which will be played later today. I think in like something like two hours. All right. Let me confirm that uh, the match is over. I think I should be done now. All right. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, see you tomorrow.